Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam Hurst and this is the 19th in our series of the October Gothic A Day Tempts the Vampires to Stay. Now, as usual, I'll be introducing a text, giving you some idea about why it's important, going over some key plot points and also giving you some further reading recommendations. I also think today I'm going to have to do the job of introducing the author. We're sticking with another ghost story author, but one who's far less well known perhaps than Charles Dickens, who we talked about yesterday. I'm also taking you back up and over the border into Scotland because we're going to be talking about Margaret Oliphant. Um, we're going to not be reading A Beleaguered City itself, but rather one of the stories in this collection, The Land of Darkness, which isn't a ghost story proper, but I'll explain in a minute why I've chosen it. And she did write a number of other ghost stories. Now, Margaret Oliphant didn't just write supernatural fiction. She was incredibly prolific, writing novels, many domestic novels, also over a hundred articles, biographies and histories. Margaret Oliphant was in fact working to live and also to support her family. She had a bit of a rough life. She married her cousin and they had numerous children, many of whom died in childbirth. Her husband also died young, when they were in Rome for his health and she was left with three children who needed um, her care and her support because she was left basically unsupported. We also find when she returned to the UK that she ended up supporting her brother's family as well as he'd run into financial difficulties um, while living in Canada. So she was supporting a lot of people and writing often very fast and very on demand. Although her supernatural stories are often the exception to this, with her talking about them as her more personal work. Now, she was criticised at the time um, by some critics for this perceived speed, with people talking about what she could have been if only she'd had the time. But for me, Margaret Oliphant is one of my favourite supernatural writers of the 19th century, and I think it's a real shame that more people don't know about her. Her ghost stories or her supernatural fiction was perhaps the most appreciated of her work, with M.R. James looking at it as being sort of the perfect exemplar of religious ghost stories. So one of the reasons I've chosen to look at Margaret Oliphant, apart from the fact that I love her, is that she is writing um, in a way which clearly shows the intersection um, in that Victorian period of the ghost story with theological and spiritual debates. Now, we're all perhaps aware of the overlap between spiritualism and the interest in spiritualism and the um, interest in ghost stories, or as parts of the plot in ghost stories. But we're also finding in Margaret Oliphant, her um, Christian faith and an interest in life after death being reflected in the telling of her ghost stories, which are often run through with biblical paradigms or with incredibly creative explorations of life after death. And that's why I've picked the land, af um, the, la <laughs> the land of darkness, the land after darkness, no, the land of darkness, because it's part of a series of five short stories that she wrote where she imagines the afterlife and the land of darkness is her imagination of hell. And it's truly very, very chilling um, and a, a very interesting um, and nerve-biting read. We are told the story of a man who just wakes up in hell, but he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what's going on. He wakes up in a city controlled by lawlessness, where there's no compassion, there's no pity, the strongest rule, and it's each man for himself. He ends up running away when he sees a public vivisection of a live human being, tries to stop it, and is being pulled towards the table himself. He runs out and goes to the next city, and then the next, and the next, each of them seeming at first to be a respite from the previous, so the next city is full of law and order, but also full of boredom and observation and cruelty. The next city is one of pleasure, but it's continual, unending pleasure with no breaks, no possibilities of meaning. And then he goes on to the next place, which is constant industry, but it's industry which serves no purpose. And he goes this round of hell, 
all the while trying to avoid the mines, which are perhaps what uh, is a more sort of traditional conception of that um, demons and hellfire sort of hell. So it's a really fascinating read and it's definitely very gripping. I do recommend reading it and the rest of the stories in that series, all of which are available on the website for the Margaret Oliphant um, fiction, where I think pretty much all of her fiction is found online. I also recommend if you're wanting to look at her ghost stories, a couple of different reads such as Old Lady Mary, which is about a woman surprised by her own death. She hasn't made provision. The Library Window, perhaps Margaret Oliphant's most famous story, and also one of my favourites, A Beleaguered City, about a city where the dead return. You probably need your theology goggles on, although the stories are very enjoyable without those theology goggles. But if you are a theology person, there's a little bit of an extra bonus in there for you. And particularly, I find really interesting Margaret Oliphant's creativity and her multi- faceted explorations of life after death and that meaning of life after death and also the very thin boundary that seems to separate us from the life beyond. Hope you enjoy. Night night.